Le compositeur anglais Benjamin Britten, mort en 1976, a donné le meilleur de lui-même dans l'opéra. Billy Budd, Peter Grimes, le tour des crous, le viol de l'écresse sont là pour témoigner. Des sujets dramatiquement toujours très forts, dont l'écriture musicale de Britten soulignait les ressorts et les ambiguïtés. Mais Britten a su également marier le rire et la musique, comme en témoigne cet opéra que vous allez suivre dans quelques minutes, Faisons un opéra, Let's Make an Opera, créé en 1949 au festival d'Aldeburg en Angleterre, festival créé par Britten lui-même. Cet opéra est plus précisément sous-titré « Divertissement pour la jeunesse ». Il s'appuie sur un livret de l'auteur et metteur en scène Eric Crozier, avec qui Britten avait déjà eu l'occasion de collaborer quelques années auparavant pour Albert Ehring. C'est un opéra qui se divise en deux parties et trois actes. Le premier acte met en scène des adultes et des enfants qui expliquent la préparation, l'élaboration de l'opéra. Le deuxième acte voit euh, l'arrivée du public qui joue le rôle du cœur, qui répète les quatre chants qui lui sont attribués. Et enfin, le troisième acte, eh c'est l'opéra à proprement parler, l'histoire du petit ramoneur de Little Sweep, l'histoire de Samy, un enfant orphelin, tyrannisé par ses patrons, qui va être recueilli par un groupe d'enfants. C'est un opéra donc plein de charme qui mène une double fonction pédagogique à celui de pouvoir confier les rôles principaux à des chanteurs amateurs, de bons chanteurs amateurs, adultes et enfants. Britten a glissé ici et là, en cours d'opéra, des petits trucs sur la composition musicale. Qu'est-ce que l'écriture musicale Qu'est-ce qu'un opéra etc., etc. Exemple avec une production très british.
by tomorrow. No offense. Come on. It's a real dream. Who could resist? Oh, shall I?
addition of good goods from me, ladies. Look, you won't find fresher anywhere. Sweet onions, nice hard cabbages and apples. Just look at these shiny apples. Don't they look delicious? Isn't this a beauty? And what about the price? You'll be amazed. You'll pay only half as much here. Oh, oh no, no, stop! Oh, 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 We must check to see what's missing. Ah, it's stuck. He must have hidden somewhere around here. Stand aside, please. Hey, we did it! Quick! It's 
the question. Please don't grasp hold of me. What are you talking about? Let me go, I said. What? Oh, dear. Here, take this. I'm going right away. Let's go see if I can help. will be served right away. I'm going to tell you took place in England, in Suffolk, in a wonderful place, a long time before I was born. Is it a true story? As true as a story can be. It actually happened to my grandmother, Juliet. She lived at Icon Hall in a big Elizabethan country house on the banks of the River Ald, a lonely house several miles from a village surrounded by woodlands where owls scream at night. Oh, not another ghost story. Mm. When the story begins, Juliet was 14 years old. And she had an older brother whose name was Gay. That's silly. That's not a boy's but name. But it was his name, you know. And she also had a sister called Sophie. Juliet, Gay and Sophie. Yes, those were their names. And their cousins were staying with them for the Christmas holidays. And what were their names? Their names were John, Huey and Tina. Huey and Tina were twins, you see. John, Huey, Huey Tina, and Tina, the twins. And how old were they? Children will never get to the story if you ask so many questions. Go on then, Gladys. Holidays were coming to an end and the cousins were getting ready to go home to Woodbridge, where they lived. They had brought their own nursery maid to look after them and that was just as well. She had the pretty name of Rowan. <laughs> and all the children really loved her. Ah! But it was quite another matter with the housekeeper, the strange Miss Baggett. No one could stand her. She was hated by everyone. Oh, the Cat Christmas Miss Baggett. What a name. Baggett. <laughs> She doesn't sound very nice at all. And rightly so. She was a crusty, cantankerous, overbearing old housekeeper with a sharp tongue and a dislike for children. When did this happen? Soon after the turn of the century, in about 1809 or 1810. Ah, Jane Austen period. And George mm. the Fourth. Oh, those were the days. The ladies were so well dressed. They were long swinging skirts and hats with coloured ribbons you can't imagine. <laughs> the country houses in those days had great big open hearths and tall, winding brick chimneys. And when they needed sweeping, little boys were always sent up there in the soot and the darkness they had to climb up and scrape all the grime from the bricks. Sam Sparrow was a sweet boy like that. Think of it, he was only eight years old. What? He was I mean, eight? Oh, eight. Eight. His father was a wagoner. 
He earned so little and was so poor that he was forced to sell Sam to Black Bob the Sweetmaster. He and his son Clem were real ruffians on the inside as well as the outside. So you can imagine how Sammy must have felt when he had to accompany the pair of them to Icon Hall. First they stripped all the clothes off him and then drove him up into the darkness of his first chimney. They stripped him. <laughs> He climbed, and he scraped, climbed a bit higher, and scraped a bit more. He was choking with soot, but he had no other choice. He went higher and higher, and quite soon he realised that he had gone up much too far. He was right up in the top of the neck of the flue, and there he was, stuck fast. He could no longer move, neither backwards nor forwards. He became quite frantic, as well he might have been, and he started to shout, Help me! Help me! Please, anyone! I can't move! Thank God Juliet and the other children heard him. And how did they get him out? Black Bob had tied a long rope around his waist in case of accidents with the boys up the chimney. The children tugged hard on it until with a loud crash he came tumbling down. What else could they do? But he might have been killed. Poor little yes. boy. What a shock for him. I'd like to teach at Black Bob a right lesson. And Clem too. And there they were, six young children in nice clean clothes, speechless with astonishment. Nothing like this had ever happened before. What could they do with this filthy little blackamoor? He was lying sobbing in the fireplace and all they could get out of him was, please don't send me up there. Please don't make me go up the chimney again. Terrible, isn't it? Terrible. Ah, no. I think this is a good moment for music. And what did they do with him? What would you have done with him? Would you have handed him over to those wicked sweeps? No! no. Or would you perhaps have told Miss Bagger? No, 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 no. I know. Hide him. Of course. Of course. You'll yes, never believe it, but the children had exactly the same idea. They laid a trail of sooty footsteps over to the window to trick the sweeps into thinking Sam had run away. Jolly clever of them. Then they hid him in the toy cupboard among their hoops and dolls. He stayed there for the whole day and the following night. And Miss Bagger never discovered him. The children were far too clever for her. They bathed him, fed him, dressed him in clean clothes, and smuggled him out of the house before her very eyes. How did they manage that? How did yes, they please, do that? Yes, please, please tell us how. John, Hugo and Tina, the twins, and their nanny were just about to travel back to Woodbridge. They put Sam in the top of a big trunk and loaded it onto the coach. And as soon as they were clear of the house, they freed Sam and journeyed joyfully on. <laughs> I do hope Sam lived happily ever after. Hmm, yes. Juliet's uncle took pity on the boy. He gave him some work gardening on his estate. And there Sam stayed. Well, if you ask me, that was a lovely story, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it really was. It's so good, it would make a good play. What about making it into a play? Or an opera? An, an opera? opera? A great idea! Hooray! Hooray! Yes! yes! Oh, oh, wonderful yeah. idea! You must be the composer, of Yay! course. Hooray! Who will we require? Let me think. First, there are those two sweeps. Black Bob and Clem. Bass? And light tenor. And we need a Miss Baggett, the housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Alto. That's a part for you, Gladys. I expected that somehow. Oh, there's Rowan, the nursery maid. I must obviously sing Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> you mean soprano. Anyway. And there are three girls, Juliet, Sophie, Tina, and the boys are Gay, John and Huey. And also Sam. Mm -hmm. That makes four. 
Hmm. Ah, good. There are four of us. Four boys. It fits beautifully. As long as Annie plays Juliet. <laughs> I'm too old for that. Not on stage, dear. You won't look a day older than 14. <laughs> Definitely not. Clem, he's the difficulty. Mm -hmm. We've no tenor, but we'll be able to solve that. Hmm. Remember that moment in the story when Sam is sobbing in the fireplace? Yes, of course. Please don't send me up again. Exactly. I can do that. Hmm. Now try to sing it. Mm -hmm. Try in English. Play it again, please. Sing it twice this time round, yes? Please don't set me up again. And now again, drop a semitone. Please don't set me up again. Sounds much better than speaking. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that's right. You can see what power the music has. Whether it's joy or sorrow, all feelings are heightened by the music. And now the last question. Who will write the words? Ali! 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 Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. You write poetry very well, though. But that's nothing like writing an opera. <laughs> I don't even know how to begin. Does Norman write the music first and I fit the words, or is it the other way round? No, we work together, Annie, all along. That's good. How long have we got for it? I think we should aim to give the performance in the last week of the school holidays. <laughs> that allows us ten weeks for everything. Writing the words. Learning the music. Making costumes. Finding an orchestra. And practice, 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 practice. practice. <laughs> Beggars. <laughs> Dear Owen, dear Owen. Good evening to you, Max. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Look! Look at Tiny oh. Moon! Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Let me see! Let me see! Oh, it looks perfect. like a doll's house. Isn't mm. it lovely? <laughs> Look at the striped wallpaper, just like an old mm. country house. <laughs> oh. There's a window! Look, and a toy yeah. cupboard. We've already started yeah. rehearsing. Yeah. But we're still missing one of the leading roles. I remember you used to sing wonderful soprano in the choir. But now my voice is broken. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Would you sit down, dearest? <laughs> no, thank you. I'd rather stand. Um... Uh, 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 
<laughs> when will the performance On be? On the 20th of August. At the Jubilee Hall. It's only small. You mean in public? <laughs> yes, and how will perform? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't sing in front of people. And why not? Well, I'm just a simple oh. middle-class fellow, not an opera no, singer. No, no, Psst. Now, your stage design is really great. Genius. Make some room, please, for our guest. <laughs> Thank you. Is this the right key for you? I don't know. Do try it. I think it's too high. I'll never get up there. La 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 May I? Please. You will see, my darling, how refreshing it will be in this heat. We can splash about a bit in the water and then we can... Worry. I'll fetch it, I'll fetch it. I'll be right back. the sweep's a bit too long. The song, dearest Annie, will be sung by the audience. What, the audience? Mm -hmm. We haven't got a chorus like most operas, so we're going to use the audience. In all I will need, let's see, three songs for them to sing. Sing it so that the emotion comes through in every note. Try it again.
It's standing right here. That's where I left it. Where has it gone? Please. Splendid day. What a cloud in the yes. sky. A day just as it should be. Yes. Follow me, gentlemen. <laughs> Yes. Where did you get it? We found it. Found it? What do you mean? It didn't cost anything. It didn't cost anything? No, ah. nothing really. And did you get this chair free too? Yes. Now please, can we finally start rehearsing? Come along. I'll start. <gasps> <laughs> Is he wounded? Please forgive us. Are you in a lot of pain? All we wanted was to help you. We only we wanted, wanted to, to help, help you. Help. Oh, please don't set me up again. Annie, it sounds completely stupid. <laughs> <laughs> please. The words weren't meant to be spoken. They're meant to be sung. Oh, oh, only just a How Oh, no! Go! Oh, look! Oh, that's it's, our bells! It's, it's, it can't be true. 
Ready? Anyone who isn't busy on stage, please help me with a song. This is very serious work. Please. Now, once again. I've punched them air holes oh, in the back. Oh, boy. He's got the most difficult part. <laughs> he looks like a sardine in a tin. Are you comfortable? Fine, thank you. I'll have a little sleep. Oh. <laughs> Please, sir. Would it be possible to rehearse from the time when Juliet faints? Right, number 13, on the beach. Is everyone ready? Thank you. <gasps> oh. When I say yes, I plead with you now, or we'll never get it. Here, this is for you. You're very welcome to come to the performance. Thank <laughs> you. 
next door. Hurry along, hurry along. Don't stand gaping, don't stand gaping. Four more chimneys on this floor, four more chimneys on this floor, four more chimneys. Four, four, give them all a far, all a far a scraping, scraping. Smooth and white and stained with tears, with tears wrapped in scarecrow rags and patches, in scarecrow rags and patches. And such like toys can't compete with human merits. Did you hear? Fetch the laundry. <laughs> Please, Mr. Sweep, huh? for mercy's sake, don't send this poor little boy up the chimney. He's weeping for fear. Weeping for fear? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Lord bless you. Ah! Uh, Them's tears of gratitude we see. Uh. He's aching for it, ain't you? I'm hey? Sure he's not. Ain't that true? Oh. Sam. Ah! <laughs> now, little white boy, shiver with fright, boy, scared in the night, boy, time, time for your climb. Clothes off me bright, boy. Don't kick or fight, boy. Oh, say it, bite, boy. Time for your climb. Pull the rope tight, boy. Kiss us good night, boy. Pull the rope tight, boy. Climb out of sight, boy. Oh, time for your climb. Scrape that flu clean, or I'll roast you alive! When he comes back, boy, he'll be a black boy. Scrape a land sack, boy. Throw through a crack, boy. A chimbly sack, boy. A chimbly stack, boy. A chimbly chim, a chimbly chimbly stack, boy. No! Please, let me back down!
hide with me. There's plenty of room for both of us. What's that? Help! Pull me down! That's the little sweet boy. He's in the flu. Help! Help! You must call the others quickly, Joe. Here we are. What's going on? Help! I can't breathe. Quickly, get him out. It's no good waiting. Hold on really tight and don't let go. We'll pull him down using this rope. I'm ready. Pull as gently Hurry. as you can so we try not to hurt him as we get him out. Pull the rope gently until he's free. Oh, pull the rope gently until he's free. Oh, pull the rope, he won't. Pull the rope, he won't. Pull the rope gently until he's free. Oh, pull the rope gently until he's free. Oh, pull the rope. It's no good. I'm still okay, stuck. we'll have to pull harder this time, but not too hard. Pull the rope harder and give a good heave. Pull the rope harder and give a good heave. Pull up, strongly up. Pull up, strongly up. Pull the rope harder and give a good heave. One more time. Yeah. Uh, <gasps> uh, um. What 
is this? Uh, you lazy bones! Uh, uh, Why are you standing around? Uh, up to the uh, oven! Uh, oh, um, Hurry up! Move uh, yourselves! Uh, uh, mm. Real old blunderbuss, ain't she? <gasps> oh. What is this? And why is the window open? So deep, tracks up on the sheet. So up on the window seat. So deep, rock and so no after him, after him, young Sam is loose. Sam! Wait until we catch him, we'll whip him till he howls, we'll teach him to run off and it is duty, duty, duty. Shame him up and kill him, keep him with the fowls And mortify his pride, the little beauty Beauty, beauty, little little beauty Beauty, beauty, little little beauty Beauty, beauty, little 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 beauty I'll give him run away Come back Nay, 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 but tow down I'll kill all him round they breathe Come back Tar and feather him Come back Goodness 
me. The little sweep. You mean our little sweep? Can't believe it. Whatever will Miss Baggett she say? She mustn't find out. And she shouldn't guess it. And she's not to know. And he's so our secret. secret. But what are you going to do with him then? Oh. Please, Please feed, feed him. him. The poor boy, he's so hungry. You see, Rowan, we can't possibly hand him over to those horrible sweeps now, can we? No, no we couldn't. But we can't possibly tell Mama, because she's away. And our father's away as well. And if we tell Miss Baggett, she, she will definitely, definitely throw, definitely throw him out. Rowan, you are the only grown-up we can really trust. Oh, that's all very well for you, Miss Juliet, and for Master Gay and Miss Sophie, but you must remember that your cousins and I are only guests here. What does that matter? And Sam is a guest here now, too. And when you have such a guest who is cold and hungry and covered with soot from top to bottom, what do you do with him? Bath, oh, bath him. him. Yes. And what will Miss Baggett say about him? Oh, bother that Miss Baggett. Oh, you needn't worry for a while. I've just seen her crossing the courtyard in her clothes. Hooray! <laughs> Following the sweeps. That gives us an hour. I'm sure I don't know if you're doing the right thing. What do you think, Miss Juliet? Now look at him. Does he need a bath or doesn't yes. he? Yes. yes, he does. Would you like to have a bath, Sammy? Yes, please, Miss. Then you go and fill the buckets, Rowan. There's warm water on the hob in the kitchen. I'll fetch the bath from the attic. And I'll get some clothes from Johnny's box. I'll carry water. I'll light the fire. I'll fetch soap and towels, and you hide in here. And in five minutes, we'll all be back. The kettles are singing that midsummer loves. The fire is flinging a shower of sparks. The children run flying to fetch up their meal for washing and drying. Arrives home. One moment, Rowan. Tell me, haven't you any parents? Yes, of course. Where are they? At home. Where else? And where is your home? In Little Glenham. Little Glenham? But oh. I come from near Glenham myself. Who's your father? Joshua Sparrow, the wagoner. Joshua Sparrow? From along the ten acre field, I know. That's him, miss. And he sold you to that wicked sweep. Sold you? What, really? For money? Really? Sold his own son? How, How could, could he have? have? He didn't want to. But he broke his hip last threshing time, and then there wasn't anything for us to eat. Poor man. Oh, oh, poor no. Sammy. But it's time I began work anyway. I shall be nine next birthday. Oh, oh what is it? Nine years old.
got an idea. Well, what is it? Rowan, when will you be packing our trunks? Like I usually do, you know, when you're in bed. Can you please leave an empty space at the top of mine? I see. Put Sammy in the top. And take him home with you. Oh, yes, and he'll be free! Hooray! Mm, but he'll suffocate in a trunk. No, he'll be all right. You can let him out as soon as you are clear of the house. But what will your parents say to him? Oh, they'll help us out, I'm sure. And where will you keep him for tonight? In the cupboard. Yes, let's. Quick, 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 quick. She's, she's coming. coming. Who's coming? It's, it's Miss Baggett. Oh. Is she in the house yet? Oh. She's coming up here. and I shouted at them until we nearly got to Snape. <laughs> come back, you two. Come back and finish your lawful work. Never have I known such bad workers, such lazy bones. Oh, my poor joints. I swear that if I ever come across them again, I will. Never have I heard such insults. I curse the breeze that brought them here. Ha! The blackguards! I scared the living wits out of them. Ah! And they accused me, me of all people, of hiding their beastly sweet boy. Ah, I'll hide him if I ever lay my hands on him. Uh, Rowan. What is this? There's dirt here and mess all over the place. Didn't I say to you, clean everything? You should be ashamed, I can't understand it. Look at the creases in that curtain. Look at the footprints on the floor. You haven't tidied up, that's certain. Look at the fender all covered in soot. And look at the smudges on this door. Bother Black Bob and both his boys, those rotten scoundrels. Why are these toys lying everywhere? I say to you children, putting things away is the most important thing for children to do. Ah, oh, well, let's start right away by clearing the toys. Now open the cupboard. Oh. 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 Oh.
We've got ham and eggs for you. Ooh, oh, no. Just stretch yourself, dear. Come on. You'll wake up. Mm. Come sit down. <laughs> that smells good, doesn't it? Eat up now. But hurry, we're leaving soon. You must be hungry, Sammy. Oh, yes, miss. <laughs> eat it all up. You have to eat. I'll just fetch the trunk. <laughs> I couldn't accept it. No, really. I know it's very kindly meant. Please, you must take it. I've never seen so much money in my life. Then put it in your pocket and you'll be a rich man. I can't do that. Quickly, here come the others. Morning, Sammy. Lovely weather. We're journeying home together. Morning, morning. Morning, Sammy. You now your sweeping days are ended Morning, morning Morning, Sammy, time to travel I hear cultures of travel Morning, morning Morning, Sammy, we're tired It's a light, such a safe, such a safe And so excited Morning, Sammy, morning, Sammy Just coming. Into the trunk, quickly. Quickly, children. Hurry, we're leaving soon. Quick, you must hide. God be with you, Sammy, dear. And good luck. Goodbye for now, Sammy. And good luck, Sammy. Don't worry, we'll let you out soon. Very kind indeed. Go 
from the window. They're climbing into the coach. The twins are inside and they've loaded the trunk on top. <gasps> Sammy is safe. <laughs> Just imagine, we did it. Hooray! <laughs> 